Hello there, I'm Somnolent. You might know me better as Soul. Uh, you might also know me as this guy. Yeah, that's me. Um, so I am a Team Fortress 2 cosplayer and I started the TF2 cosplay community group. Uh, we go to a lot of conventions, and by we I mean me, but I have a bunch of crew members who help me out and all that. And uh, I just wanted to make this video that's basically me babbling about all of my various fun uh, cosplay and convention experiences because I have a lot of stories to tell and there are some stories that got forgotten. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, my first convention as Scout was actually not Phoenix Fan Fusion 2022. It was Denver Fan Expo in 2021. In January of 2021, my mom had an extra ticket to Denver Fan Expo, which was happening later that year, and I was like, sure, I'd like to come. So my mom and I, we developed my Scout cosplay, which mainly consisted of buying things online and getting them together. We actually had to make that bat custom, so this is my famous bat. It has been to a lot of conventions. You probably recognize this thing. It's made of foam, painted to look like metal, and it's got gaffer's tape on the handle. Very cool. So I spent the whole year of 2021 preparing for Denver Fan Expo. I was really excited. I started learning the Kazatsky kick. We started gathering my scout cosplay together, and it was a lot of fun. Denver Fan Expo started in October of 2021. We went, we got on the plane, we got there, and it was full of anime. It was just anime and Marvel, and that was it. And I thought I was going to be the only Team Fortress 2 cosplayer. I had a couple of dudes recognize me. It was fine. I, it was whatever. And I was not happy. But then, on the big day, on, on I believe it was Saturday of the convention, this amazing moment happened. As I was walking out of that awkwardly, very awkward. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god. Oh my god, hang on. I was literally vlogging and I saw you in the corner. Hang on. Oh my god! <laughs> There's another person! The best thing in the world. Hang on, let me pause that. Yep, that's right. I found one other scout and that was it. That was the only other scout. We found each other, took a picture. Picture turned out like this. Pretty cool. The end of her fan expo kind of sucked ass, and I was worried that the Team Fortress 2 fandom was kind of dead. I wasn't sure, because honestly, the last time I had seen a big gathering of cosplayers was way back in 2015 on YouTube, so I genuinely had low hopes for a while. But then the voice actors started doing their live streams where they would autograph stuff, which is where I got my beloved sniper autograph there. Uh, I actually have a recording from that. I love this name, Somnolent. You're great at like ending parties. You show up at a party, everyone just goes to sleep. Somnolent. Boom, headshot. Don't wake anybody up. Along with the live streams that the voice actors did with Shork, uh, there was also the Save TF2 hashtag that happened in May of 2022. You know what else happened in May of 2022? Phoenix Fan Vision. So I created the sign and I went to Phoenix Fan Fusion with my cosplay game high and my hopes very, very, very low because I was not about to be disappointed like I did at Denver. But to my surprise, before I had even walked in the door, I already found TF2 people. I ended up seeing quite a few TF2 cosplayers of Phoenix Fan Fusion 2022. Now you know that whole story because I made a whole video on it back in 2022, shortly after the convention. And if you knew me personally, you also know that I met somebody, but um, we do not talk about uh, that. He gave me animal bones, though, and a lot of trauma. In July of 2022, I actually moved to Washington State after living in Arizona for so long. And when I got to Washington, I realized, holy shit, there's a lot of fucking conventions here. I didn't know about very many of them except for Emerald City. I had no idea what PAX West was. And in 2022, Emerald City Comic Con was actually scheduled for August of that year. Emerald City kind of sucked ass. I saw, you know, maybe one or two cosplayers. But I did actually get a lot of my lovely collection here from that convention as well. The vendor hall was very nice that year. 
And then PAX West came along, and I had no idea what PAX West was until I got here. So about two weeks before the convention, my mom got me a pass for Saturday after we discovered there's a panel with the Team Fortress 2 voice actors. PAX West was pretty interesting because, well, there was the panel. But nobody really wanted to do a cosplay meetup because, well, there may have been a lot of TF2 cosplayers there, but they were all focused on the panel. So instead, I was able to meet my heroes, basically, and that's where this adorable picture came from. So after PAX West, it was time for Salt Lake City Fan X. Uh, shortly after Phoenix Fan Fusion, someone had invited me to their group in Utah, and I was like, sure, why not? My mom had, again, an extra ticket, and so she was able to bring me along. And Salt Lake City Fan X was actually very fun, and this is where one of my uh, silly little stories comes in. So prior to actually attending the convention, I had talked to them a lot, so they were very well aware that I had a lot of mental illness, but they were not aware that I had hypoglycemia. So on the first day of the con, after having a lot of fun, getting to meet everybody, filming and all that, while they were filming a segment for their own little project, I decided to say, hey, I'm going to go to the vendor hall for a little bit. And they were like, okay, cool, see you later. Uh, about 10 minutes into wandering the, through the vendor hall, I started to get the shakes and the chills and the fatigue and the fog and the bleh. And then I realized, oh shit, I'm having hypoglycemia again. So I made the really smart decision of texting the entire group, hey, I just collapsed over by the vendor hall floor entrance. I'll, I'll catch up with you guys later. So I'm sitting over here, not really sure what's happening, just sort of, uh... The next thing I know, I have a Merasmus cosplayer running full speed down the hall directly towards me, and he is absolutely panicked. And that's when I realized that people actually give a shit about my existence, and I think that's really cool. I was okay, you know, they kind of gathered around me, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay, I just need food, somebody gave me gummies, it was okay. And the rest of the con was actually pretty fun. Uh, I made the grave mistake of wearing a crop top in Utah. Whew. I think I traumatized some children that day. Hmm. So after Salt Lake City Fan X of 2022, I didn't have any cons for the rest of the year. It wasn't until March of 2023 when Emerald City Comic Con was scheduled. So Emerald City Comic Con was actually kind of interesting because I did find a couple of TF2 cosplayers, but none of them were able to really create a meetup like I usually do. But I did have a lot of fun. And guess who was actually there? Robin Atkin Downs. He was actually there for Metal Gear Solid reunion panel and an autograph event. And uh, a funny thing about that autograph event, those uh, autograph booths, I went there on the first day that he was there and uh, his two co-stars from Metal Gear Solid had lines out the door. Meanwhile, Robin, he has uh, me, two other cosplayers from Team Fortress 2, and a couple of neckbeards. And that, that was it for his line. I felt a little bad, but he seemed to be pretty chill with it, and, uh, of course, you know, he embraced the medic, and, uh, was pretty funny about that. So I actually got to talk to Robin a couple of times. Little did I know I'd be working with him later that year, but, uh, now something that kept happening throughout the con is nobody knew that Robin was actually there. So anytime I'd come up to a TFT cosplayer, we'd take our picture, do whatever, we'd talk. And then I would mention, hey, did you know that Robin Atkin Downs is here? And they would go either one of two ways. Oh my god, Medic is here? Or, who's Robin Atkin Downs? To which I would say, Medic. And they're like, oh, Medic is here? So, um, I'm not sure what happened there, but nobody knew he was there. But I was able to get maybe five, ten people to go and see him, so I hope that helped. I wonder if he remembers that at all. I'm not sure. So after Emerald City Comic Con, it was kind of quiet. I was way more focused on graduating high school in time. So Phoenix Fan Fusion 2023 kind of hit me by surprise, especially with it being scheduled during Pride Month instead of its usual month of May. Phoenix Fan Fusion 2023 was actually quite a bit of fun. Um, I met a lot of cosplayers that year. Our meetup was massive. And that was also when I debuted the Emesis Blue Scout cosplay. The meetup on Saturday was fucking awesome. It was so many people. It was way more than I was expecting. I apologize to security for blocking the way for a little while. It was a lot of fucking people and I was not expecting it. But I wanted to thank Violet and the heavy that I always forget the name of for helping me set that one up because that was a combination of the old school method of just like wandering around and telling people and giving out notes and whatever and also posting it on social media. And this was sort of the debut of the TF2 cosplay community. That was our first like official sound kind of official meetup and that was when i started getting the idea to actually make this more official and hey it turned out great now unfortunately there is one part that i always try to block out of my head but on sunday um i did run into the gentleman i do not speak of and uh, i don't remember much of it all i remember is i had ptsd and uh it was not fun 
on Sunday alongside having PTSD due to a former partner and all of that, I did actually get a very adorable little Hello Kitty. Uh, his name is now Bebo. Big Bebo. Um, do you want to see Bebo's brothers one day? Leave a like. I don't fucking know how to mark it. I'm sorry. So after Phoenix Fan Fusion, I went to Washington Summer Con. Not really much to talk about there. It was just me. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably go again next year, but probably on my own. So in the months leading up to PAX West 2023, I had actually had my panel accepted and my TF2 cosplay meetup was made official. So about two weeks before PAX West was actually scheduled, I was coming home from work one day. It was super late. I had worked 10 hours again because nobody showed up to take over for my shift. I was driving home in the dark and I get a message from Lainey, who's one of my uh, community members. So hi Lainey, thank you. She had actually sent me a screenshot of a message on Cameo that she had sent to Gary Schwartz, the voice of Heavy and Demo. She had asked, hey, are you going to PAX West because we have this cosplay meetup happening? And he said, no, but we are planning some sort of event around the same time in the same area. We're having trouble finding a venue. And little did I know that this was going to be the start of one of the biggest, like, greatest opportunities I would ever have in my life. I had actually emailed Gary saying, hey, I can help you with a venue because I did know a couple of places. So next thing I know, I am now working with uh, the voice actors, Andrew and Shork on an event called Meet the Mercs. So not only am I having a panel and a cosplay meetup at PAX West, that same evening, I'm going to have one of the biggest events ever. And oh boy, the uh, weeks leading up to that were pretty wowee. That was a lot to think about. So before I get on to PAX West, I do actually have a really funny story that happened about a day before the actual con. So Shork, as you guys probably know, he is a dude from Denmark who does a lot of awesome Team Fortress 2 stuff. He's worked with the voice actors, he does the charity live stream with his friends. He's really cool. Um, he was part of the Meet the Mercs planning process. This poor guy was not aware that you have to be 25 years old to rent a car in America. So uh, he did not have a ride from the airport. And that's where I come in. It's August 30th. I'm at work. It's 4 p.m. and I was supposed to leave 10 minutes ago. I'm stuck at work, getting ready for another long fucking 11 hour shift because nobody took over for me. And I get a message from Andrew asking, hey, can you pick up Shark and his friends from the airport? And I'm like, sure. Why not? To be fair, I had actually wanted to do that, and I had offered that previously, but they were like, hey, it's okay. Well, that rental car fell through, so now it's time for me to get my ass out the door and go pick up these three Danish men in my tiny little Toyota Corolla. And, oh boy, this this story is just full of chaos and fun, and I love it dearly. It's best, What it's probably one of my favorite memories ever. So it's now 5.30 p.m. and I have to leave at 6 in order to get to the airport in time from work. I'm contacting my coworker saying, hey, I need somebody to take over for me. I gotta go pick up a friend from the airport. And they're like, yeah, sure. Give us 20 minutes. I'm like, I don't have 20 minutes, but okay. So it's 6 p.m. and I get my ass out the door, out of work. I'm in a pretty little dress because of Kaneko Cafe being my job. And I drive to the airport to pick up these three Danish men and their camera equipment. And I'm like... Oh my god, holy shit, I had no idea this was going to happen today. And I forgot to call my parents to let them know what the fuck was happening. So yeah, I was able to pick up Shork and his friends from the airport, and I was surprised to find out that these three Danish men and their camera equipment actually fit in my Toyota Corolla. This baby can fit three Danish men and their camera equipment. So after that, I'm like, hey, are you guys hungry? We can go to South Center Mall and uh, get food. And they're like, sure, I'd love to try American food, just not too unhealthy. So what do I do? I take them to South Center Mall. We walk around for a bit. I get them Ramune, which is a Japanese soda that we sold at my store at the time. And then I take them to Buffalo Wild Wings because I could not think of any other kind of American food that was okay and not like egregiously unhealthy. But hey, they enjoyed it. And Shork, I'm glad you enjoyed Buffalo Wild Wings. I was not sure what to do for you. Um, I'm glad I'm glad you had fun. I'm glad we had fun. It was actually quite fun. I apologize if I seemed like a bitch in the time. I was just like, you know, overworked and all that. But I did have a wonderful time. And I, you know, I drove them to their uh, Airbnb in fucking Redmond, which, oh boy, that is a drive from where I work. But uh, yeah, I got them to their Airbnb and uh, went home and... Wow, that, would, that was a day. That, 
that was a really funny fucking day. So now it's September 1st and uh, I'm getting ready for PAX West and the first day of PAX West kind of sucked ass. I just sort of wandered around for a bit. I was dehydrated. I didn't really like it. And then September 2nd, Saturday, the big day of the convention, I have a cosplay meetup, a panel, and meet the mercs. So I get up that day, I have some avocado and rice because that was my power food at the time. And I get on the, I get in my car, I go on the train, and the train ride sucked ass, but uh, I get to the con. I don't really remember much else from those early parts of the day. We were handing out cards and blah blah blah. And uh, so let's get to the good stuff because that's funnier. So about 30 minutes before the cosplay meetup, which was actually on the schedule, so I couldn't just like change it or anything. It was officially on the schedule and it had a specific room and everything. Andrew and I had to go and pick up Robin Atkin Downs because nobody knew this at the time, but Robin was going to surprise everybody at the meetup and do a little bit of advertising for Meet the Mercs. So it's about 20 minutes before the actual cosplay meetup and I'm walking down the streets of Seattle with Andrew because Robin's lift had dropped him off in the wrong area. So we finally find him and we realize, oh shit, we've got about like 15 minutes before the cosplay meetup. So he has a bag of luggage and everything and we're like, oh yeah, we can just drop that off at the venue. But then we decide to stop by NYC Deli. I believe it's called that, NYC Deli? Yes, NYC Deli, which is where the very first Search for Sandwich video was filmed. I know this because I missed them that day by about 20 minutes. Um, so it was really funny. But uh, that is located in Seattle near the convention center. And uh, on our way to the venue, uh, Robin decides to record that hilarious video for his Twitter. This place looks familiar. I feel like I've been here before. I don't know. Oh, this is where it all began. Did you get the sandwiches yet? They haven't happened? This is a, the deli in New York City market. You have sandwiches? You do? I don't think it's the ones that we're looking for, but anyway. But, um, but yeah, so now we have about 10 minutes before the cosplay meetup, and I'm like, oh shit, we don't have time. So instead of dropping off his stuff at the venue, we have to drag everything and go. So we get to the convention center, and he has to drag his luggage through the security. Oh boy. We're running out of time, and I am getting messages on my phone, constant spam, of where are you? The cosplay meetup is starting! I'm here! Where are you? And all I can say is, I'll be there in a minute. I'm grabbing something. Truthfully, I was grabbing something or someone, but yeah, we finally make it. We get up the elevator, and I just rush in to the community room, and I'm like, hello! Hello! Thank you guys for coming! It's so awesome to see everybody here! Uh, I apologize for being late. I was grabbing something. And I'm... S it, Robin does not walk in for another 60 seconds. So I just... So I was grabbing something. And Robin walks through the door. Cue the screaming, cue the fangirling, the oh my god, it's medic! And I really wish somebody had recorded that moment because that was literally just like the most wholesome shit ever. Um, unfortunately, I later found out that nobody recorded it, so, uh, it's sort of one of those things where it's like, if you weren't there, then you don't know how it was. Um, but, yeah, that was just, like, the best surprise ever, because I didn't tell anybody except for my mom and dad that that was happening, so everybody was surprised, even my crew members. And I'm just like, that golden moment. I hope we can do that again someday. So Robin starts doing his spiel in the medic voice and he's advertising the Meet the Mercs thing. And that's also where those two pictures came from. Um, because keep in mind, I'm in my scout cosplay and I'm just sitting over here like... And at some point he's just like, you know, and I want to thank my friend Scout. And so that's where that picture came from, where I'm just like... E so, uh, that... That was really fun. Um, that that was just a great cosplay meetup. And I left early because we decided to uh, walk around the expo hall for a little bit. Of course I was not going to miss out on that. And uh, plus I was the one who knew where the, where the uh, booth we were looking for was. So Robin, Andrew, and I, we walk around the expo hall. And uh, Robin is his, his, in his uh, cosplay thing with the glasses, the Archimedes, and the scarf thing. I had no idea it was actually a medigun until I watched one of his streams recently. 
I was not aware. I That's pretty cool, guy. Anyway, um, so we walk around the expo hall for a bit. I'm dressed as Scout and all that. And we were actually looking for a booth that I had mentioned earlier called Glitch Gear. They are well known amongst the fandom for being the only fucking booth at every convention that'll have Team Fortress 2 merchandise. They sell t-shirts, they sell prints, they... That year they were actually selling hats that had Manco on them and God, I wish I got one. I did not. I should have gotten it. I just don't like snapbacks, honestly. Well, anyway, so we get up there and uh, Robin, in the voice of Medic, proceeds to try to strike a business deal with the guy at the booth who is just some teenager working for them. And I, all I can do is just stand there with Andrew like, <laughs> so that was funny. Um, so after that, I walk Robin uh, back to the venue so he can drop off his stuff. I actually don't know what he did from there. I'm not sure what he was doing. But after that, you know, I'm I'm just like, yeah, okay. So we talk for a bit. And, uh, and then I realize, oh, fuck, I have a panel in 15 minutes. So I grab my laptop and I rush through. And uh, I had completely forgotten all about my panel at this point because I was way more focused on everything else happening and uh, my panel was actually pretty good. I was surprised by how many people were genuinely interested in using video game voice lines in music. Um, I almost filled the whole thing. Um, I actually have a little recording of it just to share here. <laughs> No, I did not ask them to cheer. They did that on their own, and I'm really thankful for it because when every time I see it, I just it's just a happy memory for me. So after my panel, I'm pretty tired. I walk around for a bit and uh, go around the vendor hall. I get these dogs, which by the way, if you ever come to Seattle, you need to get these dogs. She's she just has her own little stand. She's always there if there's an event happening. Go find her. She has the best hot dogs ever. They're grilled. If you're okay with stuff on your hot dog, I highly recommend the Seattle dog. It's cream cheese and grilled onions. Grilled onions. The hot dog is not fucking boiled. It is grilled. It is great. I highly recommend it. It's $10 a dog, but it's so worth it. Well, anyway, enough uh, advertising. <laughs> so around 3 p.m., 3.30ish, I'm getting pretty tired, and uh, I'm honestly just sort of just done for right now. So I asked Andrew, like, hey, can I go to the venue and just chill for a bit? He's like, sure. So I go to the venue and uh, sit down for a bit, eat these dogs. This is where this picture came from. So I'm just sitting there and it's uh, quite a few hours before the event is actually starting. And at some point, um, a gentleman walks in with one of the hotel staff and I didn't recognize him immediately until I realized that he was wearing a heavy costume. Is this the uh, the voice actor meetup? And I realize, oh fuck, that's Gary Schwartz. So I stand up, I'm like, hi, I'm Bridget Lloyd. I'm gonna be working with you this evening. So we chat for a bit, and at some point Robin comes in, and uh, Andrew as well. And you know, they chat for a bit, Robin's already met me. And uh, at this point, it's probably about 4.30, I don't quite remember, but we have quite a few, we have at least two hours before the event. At some point, uh, Andrew asks me to go help out with uh, Ellen McLean, because uh, John Patrick Lowry, he's figuring out something with the car. And uh, at this point, we have about like 12, 13 people waiting in the lobby for the event. It's like two hours before the event. But here we are, there's a bunch of people in the whole lobby, and I actually did not recognize Ellen immediately. Until I hear uh, a woman speak up and, oh my god, that's the administrator over there. So I go over there and I'm like, hi, I'm Bridget, I'm going to be working with you this evening. And she's like, oh, hello. So yeah, um, one of my main jobs during this event was to just carry shit around for the voice actors, which honestly, I'm chill with. You know, I could totally be a celebrity handler. I don't really fangirl anymore. Um, I'm totally chill with just like following celebrity around, helping them with whatever they need and all that. Emerald City, I'm right here. I've got a resume. I'm totally able to help out with your celebrities. Um, well, anyway, I pick up the bags for Ellen and I walk her down over to the venue. And you know, and then Andrew and I go outside to go talk to John. Um, and keep in mind, I'm in my scout cosplay. I'm in my stupid little scout cosplay. I look like everybody else. And at this point, we have a large group of people walking in for the Meet the Mercs event. It's like an hour and a half until the event. 
And uh, so I walk with Andrew, who is dressed, you know, business casual. And Andrew talks to John. They've known each other for a long time. So it's just sort of chat. And I'm just standing there, like, you know. And John turns to me at some point and goes, Hey, it's a scout. Expecting me to to leave because, oh my god, sniper talked to me, whatever. Um, well, I'm still standing there and, and Andrew talks some more and then I, you know, he's like, it's a scout. And I say, hi, I'm Bridget Lloyd. I'm going to be working with you this evening. And he goes, oh! And I just, that is the funniest shit ever to me. I don't know why. I <laughs> It wasn't until I introduced myself that he recognized, I, I, John, you're hilarious. You're great. Thank you for existing. Well, anyway, so we walk into the venue and they chat and all that. And uh, at this point, we have a lot of people waiting in line for Meet the Marks. And then we find out Dennis went to the wrong Hyatt. So now I have to go outside and go find him as soon as he gets here. And uh, I got to be honest, Dennis Bateman is very much just the spy, but American. More specifically, Pacific Northwestern. But... um. Yeah, so at this point, we have a long line of people, and, uh, you know, I walk with Dennis uh, into the venue. And uh, they're also working on a bunch of autographs on the table, and that's actually where all of these pictures came from, because we were getting ready for it. And um, at some point, you know, Andrew tells us, okay, you know, go into... We had to use the utility hallway of the hotel's uh, venues to kind of be our backstage, so we go there, and that's where all of these amazing little photos came from. Uh, some of them were taken by me, one of them was taken by Robin, and they're just, they make me happy because it reminds me, hey, I was a part of this, you know? So we had the great idea to have uh, Ellen come out with the administrator voice and sort of announce each character and actor as they come in. So that's what we did. And if you were there, you probably remember how that went. And uh, yeah, so Meet the Mercs went off without a hitch. Uh, well, mostly. It, it was a little chaotic, but the chaos managed itself, kind of. Um... It was a wonderful time. I'm really glad I got to be a part of it. I may not be a part of the planning anymore, but um, hopefully I will be able to continue to be a part of the events themselves. And, you know, my cosplay group, we're still doing our thing. And super cool. Oh, and one more thing. So the video where Robin and Gary are opening those plushies made by Niblet's Novelties. Uh, yeah, I'm standing like directly next to the camera in that scene. Um, before they bought, before the boxes are on the table, I'm sitting there holding them for a total of like 12 minutes because they had to keep redoing takes because they kept making not very PG jokes. But, um, I'm there. Uh, you just can't see me. Meet the Marks was awesome. Great time. Love it. Core memory. Love it. Anyway. So on Sunday, I actually didn't go to PAX West, uh, because me and a couple of my cosplay crew members, we were actually helping Shork film the, uh, last part of Meet the Real Heavy. So that part where, you know, it's heavy and it's the big shot and all that, uh, all of my friends are the ones laying dead on the ground, and I'm the one running around in the background for 11 takes straight. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, and I'm really glad I got to be a part of it, and, uh, yeah. So Salt Lake City Fanix this year wasn't really, like, a big deal or anything. Uh, you know, we had we had John and Alan on a video call for the meetup and all that, and that was really fun. But um, it wasn't a big deal. And the other part is I did not take any pictures or videos because my phone fucking died that time. But, um, yeah, so that is my, that's my silly little goofy stories of um, my, my con adventures, and I'm excited to see more. Uh, my next convention is Portland Fan Expo in January of 2024. Um, my cosplay group is going to be there, and uh, we're excited to see what happens. It'll be pretty fun. So if you want to support my cosplay group, uh, I highly recommend checking out our shop. We have a lot of really cool stuff on there, and all of the funding goes directly to uh, paying for plane tickets, hotel costs, and convention tickets for my crew members. And if you can't buy anything, that's okay. Just share our shop to others and share our posts. Check out our social medias. Join the Discord. Whatever you want to do. I highly recommend joining the Discord. It's a lot of fun. We're also hosting an art competition right now. More details about that in a little bit. So yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed my little ramblings here. And uh, I'm excited to see y'all in January and March and uh, May and August or September. And maybe even November and December. And so is out.